you know, just from an early age there was always music in the household, um, all different types of music really, my mum was into sort of um, Motown and, and all that sort of scene. Um, my dad, again, had a wide spectrum of music that he brought me into, from um, folk, classical, uh, traditional Irish music, you know, all the different sort of uh, musical spectrum. So, um, oh, well, all my family can sing or do something musical. My dad plays the guitar and sings. My mum tries to sing. Um, my aunties were always the ones that could sing, um, and my uncles, cousins, you know, singing's always been in the family. My granddad's in my house as well. Um, well, I've been listening to all different sorts of music since I can remember. Um, I grew up mostly with like country music, the old traditional country, like Patsy Klein, Carter Family, the Lugan Brothers. Um, you know, all that sort of scene, but it wasn't until I was about 11 or 12 that I really started um, digging deeper into the folk rock scene. Um, my dad played me um, Guinevere by Crosby, Stills and Nash, and I just found the, the harmonics, the, the harmonies, um, everything about that track, you know, it's just so raw, so it really grabbed me with, um, the start. Another one was Bruce Springsteen as well. He really grabbed me when I was about 13. I just felt, felt a lot of his songs, but I wanted to get out of his hometown and also, you know, just living that sort of living the dream. I think it was probably um, an Emily Harris album. Um, it was just like a profile of the greatest hits. I bought that from um, Andy's Records, yeah. yeah, back in the day. And um, Again, I was just discovering Emily Harris through like the Grand Parsons connections and all that. I used to watch um, a country um, documentary that was on BBC, uh, BBC Two, around that sort of time, and I discovered Grand Parsons through that because obviously I'd loved the country scene and it sort of um, how we get into it a little bit more. So that was probably the first album I bought. I like um, musical integrity in a lot of uh, the music that I listen to. Um, I don't think. It has to be well produced to be able to be appreciative. Um, you know, a lot of Crosby, Stills and Nash stuff, it's just, it's raw, isn't it? It's not um, polished, you know, it doesn't need to be, but it's got that, that raw integrity, you know, with the songwriting, the playing, the harmonies, um, just the whole concept, you know, the lyrics and everything. So it's the same with Joni Mitchell, and I think it's just about capturing that soul behind the artist and you can really feel the songs, you know, really pulls at your heartstrings. So yeah, Blues from Laurel Canyons. That was um, the one that really got me. I mean I love the Beano album but the Mick Taylor years for me are probably like, my most favourite. And you know, I love the Rolling Stones. Listening to like Ghost Head Soup and that always takes me back to when I was like thirteen, painting my bedroom. Um, my parents were quite um, you know laid back about me drawing on the walls and stuff. I used to paint um, murals on there of different things like guitars and and whatnot, and um, I spent the whole summer when I was about 13, 14, um, painting my room to, to Goats in Soup and, and some rock and roll and like, on the main street. So. It wasn't really till I was about eight years old that I started um, writing my own songs. I mean, I don't really call them little ditties and stuff like that at the time, but you know, I was influenced by a lot of um, songwriters, and I thought to myself, I always had this dream that I wanted to, to sing, you know, be a singer. Um, and you know, I write little ditties. And then when I was 11, um, I picked up my dad's guitar the one day. Um, he saved it from a skip, it was an old Yamaha um, FG 160, um, which again is like um, based on the old Martins as well from the 70s. And um, it's got a lovely, lovely, lovely sound. Um, I use it on a lot of my recordings now as well because it's just got a lot of um, natural reverence on it. So, then I started at the open mic when I was about 16. I was always really creative in different ways, um, whether it be writing, singing, art, um, sewing, I love sewing, knitting as well, I love knitting, um, cooking, you know, any, anything creative where I could sort of um, bring out my own ideas and do things, you know, it's always been, um, always been there again. It was always an escapism for me, music was, um, you know, I, I didn't have like a particularly, um, easy childhood. Um, 
I mean, my, my father's got a brain injury, so my mum's always been his carer. Um, so it's kind of like having four children for her and bringing us all up. Um, you know, and like, I, I didn't always get on with my father because I found it hard to, to create a, um, you know, a relationship with him because of the brain injury. Um, but he always gave me this music, you know, that was his way of sort of um, creating relationships with the music. So it was always an escapism for me. And, um, starting college, it was sort of going into the real world and um, it was a new way of life for me. You know, I wasn't quite as disciplined then, different things, I could go out more and experience life. So I was writing a lot more then about experiences, whereas before it was kind of like what I'd like to do. Whereas um, when I started college, I was writing more about, you know, first love and different experiences. Uh, you know, I'm really influenced not just by the sounds of the 60s, 70s and that, but also the style and the culture and the spirituality and, and um, everything associated with, with that scene. So I think I'd like to say that I'm kind of um, that way inclined stylistically. I think well, my first gig was probably when I was 16 and I started college. Um, I played over at the Lamb in Malvern, um, the open mics that they used to do there. I mean, that was a great musical pub for, for, for young artists and performers coming performance um, so that was a nice experience but I'd actually sang in Belgium before that as well yeah um, it was in our hotel um, they asked me to sing there so I was just sat there when I was 15 just it was mostly like covers of different songs and stuff most of them they probably hadn't heard of anyway but they, they all really enjoyed it and they wanted me to come back and so that was another good experience um, music always gave me more confidence um, I mean, I still get nervous, but it's kind of like, it's not the nervousness like, oh, I don't want to go and sing, I don't want to do it. It's nervousness where, like, you've got the adrenaline going and you're, you're excited, it's more excitement, I think. Um, so, yeah, it, it was, um, it did give me more confidence, really, doing, doing it in a different country. Not everybody's going to like your music, not everybody's going to like you as a person. But, I mean, I think if you if you um, hold your own and keep, keep it what you're doing, you know, um, You'll find people that that connect with you and um, share the similar sort of interests musically and as a person as well. But it's it's more about the response that you get afterwards. You know, when you get the people that you didn't expect that come up to you afterwards, you know, and grab you and just like the voice or, or this particular song or you know the core structure of that song. You know, it's just really affected me. So, what you get from amazing? Can you sort of picture one? Tell us what's going through your mind as you're playing. You can tell this is going to be a good night and afterwards. Yeah, so um, you know, you do the sound check, um, you go for something to eat, you go back to the dressing room and sort of uh, collect all your thoughts. And you see people coming in through, 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 through the, you know, the back doors and, and meet the other bands. Um, I was quite lucky enough to see quite a few of the other performers play as well, which was wonderful. Um, you know, you're, you're sort of networking with the different musicians and, and you get on with them as well, so it's nice to have conversations about the music that you like. Um, and then a little bit of apprehensiveness as well before beforehand. And then you go out on the stage, the lights hit you, and then it's quite, you know, it was pretty packed. Um, and it's just hitting that first chord, you know, you sort of just feel the vibe from, from, from the audience. Um, people. When you first come out, they, they talk a little bit because you know they don't know what to expect, um, which is understandable maybe. Really. Um, and then as the set goes on, you, you grab their attention even more, and and they you know they're quite silent then, and the cheers become louder, and they ask you for an encore, and you know it just goes from there really. And then you've got the after part. Uh, was there a particular song during that set where you were thinking, "I've absolutely got them"? I always find um, when I tune down to, to the David Crosby tunes at the end, um, Melt Away, I think it's probably because it's my favourite song, so like it was a song I wrote when I was 16, you know, falling in love for, for the first time and that person sort of noticing you but not noticing you at the same time and you're trying to sort of um, prove your worth to them um, and tell them in, in a sense that you know you have feelings for them as well. Um, so there's the one loop here in, in it is... Um, I'm not just a girl, I'm more a woman than the rest, which is just proven, you know, more, more womaninity. Um, and, 
yeah, I think that strikes a chord with quite a lot of um, the ladies in the audience as well. So um, I get a lot of those commenting on afterwards, and also the, the guys as well that come up to me afterwards. And, you know, always very complimentary on my, on my style and my music. So that was called Melt Away, is it? Yeah. And it was inspired by David Crosby. Yeah, the. It, it, the um, or his method of playing. Well, it, the tuning is um, tuning for Gwynevin as well. That so, song, it, yeah. did big, it did have a big influence. <laughs> so, yeah, the scene. Do you think um, the popular scene is actually now starting to edge towards your music? Because folk seems to be very popular. Yeah, I think it has. You know, and there's a lot of young performers who aren't afraid to sort of um, listen to the styles of music anymore, and, and you know, um, they want to play it. And I think you know, the times are changing again. You know, the recession and everything, so it's becoming more apparent. Because folk music has always been the, the you know, the, the people of the, the music of the people. So it's kind of the best way to express yourself, you know, with the lyrics, um, the chords again. I mean, it's, it's very simple music, but again, it's, it's music that can say so much, and I think it's most um, relevant at this time as well. I mean, if you listen to a lot of Joni Mitchell songs, again, go back to her, she, she makes mistakes on some of the... the you know, chords or sometimes the voice doesn't go top, you know, totally off key, but it's just, again, it's capturing that performance. You can have, like, the best voice ever, but sometimes you hear about like, these pop songs and there's just no, as I said, there's no soul to it, there's no feeling. And sometimes the mistakes, you know, we're not perfect, and it, it reminds us, you know, that perfection really isn't um, that important, you know, to, to sort of... Um, Express your soul, you don't need to be perfect. In, in other words, sometimes there are mistakes that remind you that you listen to a human being and not a machine. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, you know, it's the, the mistakes as well, that sort of um, um, a, a part of the beauty of the songs as well, because it's, it's real, isn't it? You know, I think when you're young, you expect things to happen overnight and you know, expect you to become this famous musician do things because you're quite young and naive and blissfully ignorant um, but it's not till you sort of get to my age now that you realise what you have to do and you know realise it really doesn't happen overnight for some people it doesn't happen at all for others you know it might happen like Jake Bug at 17 you know so it happened overnight but um, I quite like the idea of working towards something as a goal it keeps you humble and um, you know it gives you something to work for the rest of your life.